quickly turn to the economics of the news business. Even before COVID-19, things were tough for many outlets, but the pandemic has made them even tougher as advertisers and consumers alike pull back on spending in response to massive financial instability. The bottom line, as Adam Riley tells us, a host of different outlets are taking drastic steps to stay afloat. Back in April, we talked to George Brennan, the editor of the Martha's Vineyard Times, about that paper's decision to stop its print run for at least a month. A lot of the small mom and pop shops on, on the island, the restaurants, the bars, the coffee shops are all closed or just doing takeout. So they're the lifeblood of our newspaper. Turns out the Vineyard Times was ahead of the curve. In Western Mass, the weekly Berkshire Record just announced its closing after three decades, saying without ad revenue, we can no longer see any way to continue publishing. The website Mass Live is still publishing, but it's asking readers for voluntary subscriptions. Stat is asking for contributions, too, as the Boston Globe, its corporate big brother, announces new layoffs and reduced 401k matches for some employees. Nationally, the picture isn't much better. The sheer enormity of the story, I, I think, is larger than any story I've been involved in in my career. But while readership is up at Dean Baquet's New York Times during the crisis, ad revenue is down 15 percent in the first quarter, with a drop of up to 55 percent projected for quarter two. Meanwhile, BuzzFeed and Vox Media are cutting pay and furloughing employees for three months. The good news? Back in Massachusetts, the Martha's Vineyard Times is back in print. We're no, by no means completely out of the woods, but this is a really positive sign and maybe a sign of better things to come everywhere else. All right, now we're back with Callie Crossley and John Keller, along with Dan Kennedy of Northeastern University. You know, Met Martha's Junior Time, Dan told us that you know, the community really stepped up and his publisher came up with some creative ways of funding, and that's what everybody's trying to do. But, I mean, how many more of these closures are we going to see? You know, we may end up seeing quite a few of them. The New York Times has reported that uh, something like 36,000 people who work in local journalism have um, been laid off, furloughed, or had their pay cut. And at the moment, it doesn't really seem like we're going to see any end to this. Uh, obviously, the big corporate chains are cutting because that's what they do. But a lot of the smaller independent publications, like the Martha's Vineyard Times, are also struggling because... Uh, they're all dependent on ad revenues and the economy has been decimated and uh, there's no there's very little advertising going on. I have an appreciation for Mass Live just saying mm -hmm. flat out we have got to have support because there's there is some of the best reporting I have Great. seen on the local level on the national level at any point in my career. And I know that people are appreciating it because readership is up, as was said in the piece. Uh, listenership, viewership is up. We just, uh, we also have just had that disconnect for a while to make, let people know this stuff is not free. It costs something. And if you are in, enjoying it, if you know that you depend on it, as we know that people are doing now, you got to help pay for it. And maybe if there's a silver lining that comes out of all of this, it will be that there will be a greater appreciation for the journalism work that's being done so well, I think, during this period of time. Yeah, you know, I, I hate to say it, but I think it might be a pipe dream to expect readers to step up and fill the, the ever-growing vacuum here. Not that many haven't or, or don't want to, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, this is a nightmare. Uh, what happened to big newspapers when Craigslist came in and took all their classified revenue is just a, turns out to be a freight train that has no brakes on it. Uh, I see now where uh, a, a lot of these smaller newspapers that are struggling and maybe up for sale uh, may be bought up by the likes of Sinclair, the broadcasting conglomerate that uh, just recently got hit with one of the largest fines. Uh, in FCC history for playing fast and loose with, with the facts and in their effort to consolidate their power. These are the folks who like to jam right-wing propaganda down the throats of your local TV news outlets. So um, I think that uh, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Bill Gates, all the uh, fat cats 
who've been responsible for the pillaging, really, uh, of uh, the newspaper industry need to be turned upside down and shaken, <laughs> and out of their pockets should fall yeah. a restitution for the damage they've you done. You know, I couldn't agree with Callie more about Mass Live. I've just come to rely on that. That has been just fantastic. And if pe more people, though, can get, if they can get more eyeballs, and some of these other places to get more eyeballs, Dan, don't you think there's some other creative uh, revenue sources that they could tap into that might even play off of COVID and coronavirus? Well, to pick up on what John was saying, um, you know, Google and Facebook have been making some voluntary payments to news organizations to try to keep them going. But um, there's talk that they may be compelled to pay a lot more, uh, given their dependence on uh, news that they're currently making use of for free. So that might be a bit of a, 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 a if that goes anywhere, that could be helpful. Okay. We're also seeing some moves toward nonprofit ownership. The uh, staff at the Baltimore Sun is trying to get their corporate owner to sell to a nonprofit. Nonprofit doesn't solve all the problems, but it's a help. Okay.